Okay. Uh, uh, there you go. <clears throat> Sorry, I was running a little late. Uh, or I, I, I'm a bit little, little, what? I'm a little late to uh, when I said I was going to be on. I said I was going to be on 30 minutes after that post, but it's a few minutes past 30 minutes uh, because I was just enjoying the mangoes a little too much. Mm. You know, I was taking my time just sucking the juices out of each, each piece, just mwah. So, a little late. Apologies. But yeah, how is everybody doing? Mmm, mango. Yes, mmm, mango indeed. I still have, um, four pieces left. So, you'll hear me eat some mango. Just don't mind that. Hey, sorry, everything's a little hectic, because I just, like, scrambled to, like, get everything set up as fast as possible. Can I go one? Yeah, sure. But... I only got four pieces, so it's gonna be sort of like a battle royale situation. Throw it into a, uh, like a pond with a bunch of fish. <laughs> like everybody in chat, just fight for a piece of mango, mango ASMR. No, I'm not gonna give you mango ASMR. <sighs> okay, God, I'm tired. Okay, I just recently got back into th this is the second day of me getting back into gym and my god have i lost all of my strength <laughs> it is fucking nothing <laughs> i i feel like a little limp noodle so uh, e even more reason to to get back into it and try even harder this time but yeah hello shameless shabby or shabby uh Is Sadeka here as well? Be like Jesus and make more mango from four mangoes. I don't think that's what he did. Is that Thai Jesus? Thai Jesus creates more mangoes out of mango. How much do you bench? Fucking nothing <laughs> right now. Uh, negative. I bench negative. If there's anything on the bar, I die. But yeah, it's it's sad. It is very sad. You know, it wasn't like, um, I wasn't any good before I stopped going, but now it's even worse. Hmm, <laughs> mango. How's your day? My day's been going great, actually. Wonderful day I've had. Um, and hopefully that's going to continue into the stream. So, yeah. Let me pull up the chat on the phone, and then we'll get right to it. I'll explain to you what we're doing today, and uh, hopefully we can get some, we can get some ideas together because I'm a little stuck, a little stuck, and I think you guys can help me out with that, as you always do. Seemingly every time I start a stream and we design stuff together, it always goes way better than me just designing it by myself in a quiet room. Okay. Does the mage have mango powers? No, I have mango powers. The mage have different powers. Put that chat up. What? Does the man mage have mango? Oh, no. Oh, hey, you're live. Hello. Yes, yes, I am live. Been watching for a while. Good vids. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just too occupied with the mangoes. Okay, so what you can see currently happening on screen is that I have been designing the outfit of Verusian mages, like the the uniforms they go into battle with, into the war. Um. Oh, there you go. Hello, Stan. Stan's here as well. Uh, we have two people of the... Uh, qu I can't say trifecta because there's four of us. What's a name for trifecta if there's four people? The, the quadfecta? We have 
we have three out of four of the quad fecta. Me, Stan, and Shabby. Only one left is Sedeka. Yeah, the quad fecta. Book club, yippee. Yes. If you're wondering, Stan and uh, Shabby and the absent Sedeka are the wonderful people who are helping me with the book and generally just ideas. Um, it is so wonderful to bounce ideas off of them. And, and honestly, sometimes I feel like they come up with better shit than I do. So, but yeah, uh, a lot of ideas recently that I've, uh, put onto the channel are very much credited to them. Uh, the coins, for example, like the idea of the coins being fingers, that's them. Uh, the war boar is also them. Uh, the whole city or country of Burla is also them. So, yeah. It is it is wonderful to have people working on the project with me. But, yeah. So, the reason we're designing mages is because the next video that I want to do was going to be about the healing bugs, right? The thing that we designed last stream. Well, I say designed. I basically finished designing it and then just started the stream to play around with some colors a little bit. But I want to make a video about the healing bugs, but I also want to put it in a little bit of a scene, you know, to, to give the healing bugs context. And I wanted it to be healing an acceleration mage, like an acceleration mage that's that's had their arm... Uh, degloved, right? I haven't told you about that yet, have I? Or well, we we talked about it briefly in some other videos. Um, hello, Randy. But basically, uh, a side effect of using acceleration magic is it tugs on your skin, uh, and eventually, if you use too much acceleration magic, your skin just comes off, and basically degloves your arm. So I wanted to draw a scene of a degloved acceleration mage from Varus getting like frantically pulling up a bottle or however they keep healing bugs, like opening it to to fix his arm that just very freshly, freshly got degloved. Um, which means I need to design the mages, because I don't just want to draw a mage willy-nilly, I need to design them. So that's why we're designing mages. I played around a little bit beforehand, just... Uh, trying to get the mood right because at the moment what I'm what I'm trying to do is uh I don't start off with trying to like separate the pieces of clothing out or going into too much detail I just try to get the overall uh, feel the overall feel of the design that I want to capture with the mages and um this didn't feel right it just looked small you know even though they're big this just makes them look small then I like made their head very tiny, or well, their head is normal size, just their body very big, but the head stays the same, and that sort of gave me a little more of that big feel, but still, their posture is a little too normal, you know? So I started playing around with it more, like playing with angles, maybe they look down on people, so I, I did like a top-down angle, or like maybe a little more hunched, but then this one is the one that really satis satisfied satisfied me that's not a right <laughs> this one satisfied me that's a creepy way to say it um i i like this one there you go i should have said it like that i like this one because of how hunched and like sort of looming it is i already posted it on on the um community tab of course but i just like the feel of like him being sort of like you know hunched uh and even though just sitting and chilling He's kind of imposing, you know? You wouldn't want to sit close to this guy. You'd sort of, like, edge, o uh, edge away? What the f- Scoot away. Be like, ugh, okay, let me get some space between me and this guy. I don't know what he's thinking. Uh, thank you, Simon, by the way. You inspire me and make, um, to make my own world. You're welcome. I'm glad I inspired people. Or inspired you. I appreciate it. How long do you think till there's Rule 34 art made of rust and trenches? I've already said this in the Discord multiple times. We've had conversations about this in the Discord. Um, I feel like the sign of me having truly made it 
is that there's art on rule 34 of my world. Because then at that point, you're like, yep, yeah, you've made it. You know? Like, that's a, that's a, that's a milestone, you know? But it's not like, no, no, but hear me out. It's not like, if I ask for it and then get it, that's not right, right? That doesn't feel right. It has to, like, it has to come naturally, you know? Then I feel like it is, it is a success. What did I join into? You, you joined into me explaining that getting art on Rule 34 would be the success of the channel. That's be... That would be the zenith of my career. It's so real. I'm telling you, it is. It fucking is. Because, like, having, having a world that's popular and people like is one thing. But then having a world that's so popular that somebody looks at characters in that world and is like, I want to draw that guy. Fucking. Then, and then they do it. That's a, that's a, you know, that's a different level. Streams are very different. What do you mean? Something changed. Don't even get me started on my fanfic. What? <laughs> but yeah. Um, let's see. What else do I got? Alright, this is the most recent drawing I did of the mage. Which I sort of decorated it a little more to try and see if that looks right. I think it's going sort of in the right direction. He's smoking mango. No, no, no. I'm not smoking mango. Jakob pinup art. Come on, guys. Oh, boy. But yeah, I think it sort of goes in uh, in the right direction, but I'm not quite sure yet. Um. So let's do this first. Uh, I'm going to write down the requirements that we need for the design so we can get a sense of what we're trying to accomplish, right? So, uh, what I want to get out of the concept is I want the design of an acceleration mage. Or, well, a kinetic mage. A uh, Varus specifically. So a Varus uh, kinetic mage. The feelings that I want to try and get out of the piece or out of the character would be uh, imposing, uh, looming. I I wouldn't say scary in particular because it's not like the the design is trying to be scary. It's just that the nature of a mage inherently makes them a little scary. You know, it's not like they try to put fangs on the thing and be like, ah! It's unintentionally scary. So I don't want to put scary in the in the requirements. Unsettling? Intimidating? Yeah, intimidating. I would say unsettling, sure. But like I'm gonna I'm gonna put a down arrow on it. Just to make sure that we know we're not trying to like intentionally make it creepy, you know, not like purposefully unsettling, but if we get unsettling feelings from it, that's a that's a good thing. Awkward maybe? Yeah, well the thing is, um this is sort of just for the design purpose, because in the scene that we're actually gonna put the mage, there's sort of gonna be uh definitely less imposing and less scary looking because we're putting the mage in a vulnerable situation within the image. You know, so this is just for the sake of the design itself, but then when we put it in the scene, the mage is probably not going to look imposing or anything just because we're putting them in a vulnerable situation. They're, you know, leaning up against the side of a trench desperately trying to, like, patch themselves up, which obviously would make them less scary. Um... Would the side effect only happen on arm skin or also the rest of the body? Um, the part of the body that you use to cast spells. So most of the time, obviously, people would use their arms and hands to cast spells, so that's where it would affect it. Um, sorry, mango break.
But yeah. So the issues I've been having, or I guess... How do you spell that word? I've always heard it, but I don't know how to spell it. I'm just gonna crux. The crux. Um, you know the bouldering term? Or I don't know if it's an actual word or if it's just made up for, uh, for the sake of... Um, by the way, do you know what drawing tablet he uses? Uh, are you asking me? Uh, I, I have a whole video that's called My Setup, if you're wondering like what I use in general, but for the tablet, just to answer it so you don't have to watch the video if you don't want to, uh, it's an OOG, U-G-double-E. Uh, it's model M708. It's like a cheap, it, it's surprisingly cheap for its size. You know, it's it's the first tablet I ever used, and I have not bought any other tablet um, I, I, I bought the same tablet twice because this one broke, or, or like the, the OOG tablet, no, U-G-double-E, OOG M708, that's the tablet. Uh, I had this, I, I got it as a gift, and then that's the first tablet I ever used, and I've never had any problems with it until it passed away. Like, after eight years of use, maybe. Eight years? Wait, no. I haven't drawn that long. Have I drawn that long? After six years of... I, I don't know when it died. But... I... I just bought the same tablet twice as backup. And as it passed away, sadly, prayers to Ugi Mark I, or... Uh, Unir, uh, Ugi... Yeah, Sir Ugi... Um, now I'm using Ugi Jr., which is the same exact model. Uh, I'm from... Okay, I'm I'm from Germany. I was born in Germany, but I live in Thailand currently. All right? So that's where I am. I'm in Thailand. But yeah, but I don't have a backup for this one, so I'm going to have to buy the same tablet again as a backup. Which, yeah, I'll buy the same one again, because again... I have not seen, found any problems with it. Yeah, I salute you, Ubi. But yeah, anyway, um, I, I, the reason I'm calling it a crux is because this is sort of like the, the challenge, the fun part. Oh, uh, the viewer count is 333. Lucky number. Nice. But yeah, the this is the fun part, right? Where we have to like rack our brain and try to fiddle around with it to get it right. The balance of medieval and military. Because that's sort of a thing that I've been struggling with with the concept. And I don't think I've properly nailed it yet. There's a very fine line of like making it not look military like, straight-up military uniform, but also not making it look like a, a fantasy outfit, you know? I'm trying to make it, like, this ambiguous middle ground. Um, like, for example, this. This is not military at all. This is too much fantasy, right? Uh, and then something like... Uh, well, actually, I haven't succeeded in making one that is too military, but I've definitely not succeeded in making one that's a balance. Uh, this one is probably the closest to what I'm trying to do, but there's such fine little tweaks that you can do just to, like, swing the balance into one way or another. Like, for example, one of the things that I did with the ROM uniform, which I'm still going to redesign again, um, is it's literally the same shape uh, and same design as, like, a military uniform with, like, the sort of big sleeves... Like this, and then, you know, the the military belt, and then, like, the this sort of stuff going on. Right? Which was going to look too military. I'm using the word military too much. Um, it was going to go too much into that direction, but I did just a little thing by changing the material to gambeson. So I literally just added, like, you know, sewing lines down the side, like this, 
And then it was like, oh yeah, there you go. That's the middle ground I'm looking for. That was it. Just changing the material. So there, there's like, it's it's like a really fiddly like that. So we'll have to see what we can come up with. So yeah, that's the crux. Uh, and then last thing, or uh, I can't think of anything else yet, but last thing would be uh, musts, which are the things that we have to have in the concept. So uh, first we need uh, input, output, obviously. We need somewhere with potions, so the mana potions. Uh, then we need the healing bugs, or the pills, we'll call them. Uh, then we need the, you know, the, the staff. Yeah, hold on. I, I'm gonna change this to what it's supposed to be. Crux. There you go. Okay. Staff. And then we need kindling. And that's about it. Um, a lot of the things that this guy's carrying, I was thinking... Well, I was thinking he wouldn't carry them. Ba basically... The, the mage is holding by themselves the bare minimum, but they have, like, maybe maybe we'll, we'll be able to do this in this stream as well. I want to basically design out a basic mage platoon as well. Like, what does a mage platoon consist of? You know, are there, how many supporting units are there? How many uh, gunners or whatever? I, I don't know military terms, right? So I'll have to learn along while we're... <laughs> trying to think of that but basically it's not just going to be a mage by themselves you know that's just wasting resources if you want a mage to be on the battlefield you'll have to support them to to have them be as useful as possible uh, so the mage by themselves i didn't think would actually hold that many things on them um that would be the job of like a little squire uh, i don't know what to call them yet but basically a soldier that's tasks tasked a soldier or two that are tasked with holding all the things that the mage needs. Um, so those would be uh, extra potions, inputs as well, and the staff, because the staff is gigantic. So I don't think the mage holding that would be, you know, they're, they're too they're too fancy for that sort of shit. Get the, get the squires to hold that. But uh, the, the, the inputs... We can have inputs on the squire because the connect the the connecting line they can just plug into the mage, but they're just holding the input, you know. So it's just like a long uh, cable that just connects into the mage, so they don't have to bear the weight of all the inputs. Assistant, yeah, mule men. Mule men is mule men is actually fucking sick ass name. I like mule men. Mjolman. Mjolman. What up, monster man? Nothing much. Okay, so... Let's look for references. So, obviously this is going to be a little tedious, because... The chat's probably going to move really fast when I ask for references. So, uh, please don't be bothered too much if I miss your suggestion, because I'm going to miss a lot of them while I'm uh, reading and also searching up for things. But mewing time? <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go, it's starting. Um, but yeah, if you have any suggestions for clothing, 
that we could take as inspiration for uh, the mage. Go for it. Uh, and if I missed it, you can repeat it, but please take some time between times repeating it so it doesn't become too annoying. Um, so, pin interest. I'm gonna go on to the Pinterest, uh, because I have made a board on there with, like, clothes to take inspiration from. Uh, so I can sort of give you a starting off point. If if you don't know yet what we're sort of trying to go for, this is going to be uh, some guidance. So uh, puffy pants and shit like that is for sure going to be a must. One that I really like, which... Uh, I, I would probably take heavy inspiration from is this one. This one's so nice. Just like the 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 lined sort of tighter arms, and then the really puffy like pants. That's oh, that's so good. This one, this one's really good. Uh. Then, oh, Roken, thank you for the 10 euros. Appreciated. Safarvid jackets look very interesting, I think. Okay, let me search that up. Safarvid jackets. Uh, no, no. This is not what I'm trying to go with. <laughs> not going to use that as inspiration. Here is, so they are going to have some pieces of armor to them. Um, mostly I was thinking that they would have the middle piece, like uh, the chest plate, and then like some leg protection, but I, I might change my mind with that and just go for cloth, because, um, oh, right, let me add that to the list, I guess. Uh, another goal of the uniform would be for it to be comf comfortable. Because the mage needs to be as focused as possible to cast the best spells, so it's it's important for them to be you know comfortable uh, and and not be hindered by their their uniform. Okay, then we have this stuff, which is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I can't tell you where it's from. Because I don't know. Oh, thank you for the 20 nook, Lenny. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Pattern-wise, I think stuff like this would be perfect. Kind of looks Persian. Yeah, you, you can... Think about it amongst yourselves, because I have no clue. I I was thinking about having face armor as well. Like armor that's uh, shaped like a face, but I don't know... It might hinder, you know, the, the comfortable side of things, but also just uh, vision would probably... Unless we want it to be, like, able to be flipped up, maybe that could be something. Uh, like, the, the helmet shape could be like this, right? Uh, with the mask in front. Uh, and then if you flip it up, obviously, the it would be like this instead. So, that could be the case. Yeah, what else? Uh, another part of Verushan design is that often they will hammer details into the armor. So something like this, where they bend the actual plate itself to get patterns and stuff like that. Uh, where in contrast, Rom, on the other hand, they would uh, add another layer of material on top 
and bend or, or pattern that instead to not damage the underlying layer because they just believe that, you know, um, it, that makes it sturdier. Okay, thank you for the 50 milk, Lenny. Appreciate it. The pickle haub is really cool because the head ornament, it has... Okay, let me check that. Also, PZ, thank you for the one euro. Appreciate it. Um, pickle... That is a very nice design. Okay. Let's try using that. I, I can see this... I can see this being able to be combined together. Um, especially what I like is the strap of the helmet being able to be put on top. Though I don't know how the fuck you do that. Does this unbuckle or something so you can like... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, it does unbuckle. Okay. Yeah, because that just gives like a, a nice visual. So we might want to do that uh, with the helm being buckled like that. And then you being able to detach it and put it up top instead. Uh, thank you for the five euros. Maybe something more chainmail face veil. Just more, just some chainmail face veil. What is a chainmail face veil? Uh, no, 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 not a chain mail face, face, chain mail face veil, not, not that, not that. Okay, this, okay, where the issues start arising is, do you have any ideas for cloaks? Like things, you know, medieval gar, uh, not medieval garments, more, you know, I, I don't have any uh, military references. I only have these, which are, you know, the, 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 the other ones. A poncho. Poncho, my, I don't know. Hold on. Poncho. Thunderhosen? Oh. Yeah, we're definitely going Plutohosen. Plutohosen? Plutohosen? Style? War poncho? Yeah, maybe some sort of war poncho. Great cloaks. Nah, not great cloaks. I'm I'm trying to have it cover the front more as well. But yeah. Oh shit. Uh, thank you for the fifty sec. Finally catch my first stream. Oh, well done. Well done. Welcome. Welcome, Vodar. Welcome to the first stream. Glad to have you here. Trench coat. I'm oh, not a trench coat. Potato Tang. Thank you for the 2000 W. I don't know what that is. Uh, just wanted to say I enjoy your... You stream and art. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Mechanic overalls? No, fuck no. Not mechanic overalls. A 
Victorian night cloak. Okay, hold on, slow down. Uh, Broken, thank you for the five euros. Again, since the last dono got overlooked. Oh shit, sorry. If I did miss one, I'm sorry. Um, puffy clothes and some armor. Maybe look at some lance knight. Okay, hold on. Let me look at the Victorian night cloak first. It's giving me some um, Bloodborne vibes. I do like it though. I like that it's two layers. Uh, which is interesting. So we got this outer one, don't mind him looking very disgruntled. Um, the outer layer and the inner layer, which is neat. Can definitely see that being useful. Uh, okay. Landsknechte, or, or however you pronounce that. Oh, it's these guys. These, like, ultra-fancy-looking guys. Also, uh, PZ, thank you for the five years. Poncho is such a cool idea. Armor, and then poncho over it, perhaps integrated into the helmet. Cool idea. Yeah, I think poncho does have a surprising... Um, could be... Could have some surprising amount of potential. Uh... But I'm struggling to find one that feels quite right. Like this sort of thing, maybe. I, I don't think this is a poncho, really. It's sort of just poncho-esque, maybe. Probably butchers it quite a bit. But just uh, the addition of the hood as well works for me, because I was going to have that anyway. But... I, I do like how it sits over the shoulders. You know, but I do want it to also, like, cover the hands as well. So, are there any types of cloaks that you could use as, like, a, um... Uh... Like a tarp? Because I want it to be, like, you know, have utility... Look up Hooser. God damn. Look at this fancy shit. Holy shit. I I do vibe with this actually. This is some this is some Verushan type of fucking over-exaggerated shit. Where they just... just go for drip instead of function. God. The, the hundreds of buttons. I like that. We can definitely go with something like that. Or maybe, like, less buttons, but then go with more... like this, where it has, like, the loops as well. That, that could be very drippy. Like, have these loops on the side of the cloak, maybe? Or on the inside. I don't know. Uh, thank you for the 20 nook, Lenny. A Bunad cloak. Okay. Bunad cloak. Bunad cloak. Let's see. Huh. I mean, I see it, but it's not much of a cloak. It has the... I do like the clasp on the top, though. The clasp holding it together. I like that. Hmm. 
Let me get the clasp. No, no, I do want the cloak to cover, like, a lot. Because um, I'm, I'm sort of wanting it to go in, uh, in this direction. Because this is the one that I feel like got the most close to what I'm trying to go for. This, so the cloak does have to be, like, really big. Uh... Bullets. Ep. Ep. What? Ep. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the thing that I was trying to think of um, putting on the cloak, which obviously it makes the cloak less useful or or less functional as it's just more shit on the cloak, but it. It, it's it's a very Verusian thing. Again, Verus is very uh, up their own ass when it comes to, like, over-designing things and just putting things on for aesthetic reasons. Um, like, in contrast with Rom, Rom is very, like, um, everything needs to have multiple functions and be as useful as possible. With Verus, it's a lot of um, decoration and and just, you know, doing too much. So definitely some of these. I mean, if they're clip-on, they seem like you can clip them on, which means you wouldn't have to have it be a part of the cloak permanently. You could just have, you know, these little, the, the little button tabs, like this thing, right, on the shoulders, uh, and then just stick these on. Uh, and if you wanted to take off the cloak and and turn it into like a like a big tarp to use for like a, a shelter or something like that you can take these off um and then they just be like randomly on the top somewhere with the hood the hood will also just be like hanging off the side or something uh, uh a Moroccan jabab I, I looked that one up I I didn't like it Uh, hold on, hold on. Face mask, um... Prince Caspian? <laughs> Sorry. Sneezed. Oh. These are interesting. They're very over-exaggerated, which is... I like it, but... Mm, I, I think I like the, uh, like, this style of face mask more. These ones. Yeah. Lenny, thank you for the 20 nook. Uh, the Hardinger crepe is a long version with holes. Okay, hold on. Hmm. What are the slits? Are those slits? Or just details? This is fun. That's good. Yeah, sorry. I'm sneaking in some mango.
Ah, I also have this, which I think is what I'm looking for, but might want to play around with it. Um, what is it called? A British, uh, and Canadian World War One rain cape. Here. Because it is literally a tarp. It is... I think it is just a tarp. Um, with some buttons. And then you see the little holes where you can... You can tie rope to, so you could probably string this thing up. I don't know what shape it is when it's splayed out, though. I might need to search that up. Holy shit, I think I just came across the perfect fucking image for this, actually. I just came across, like, a really good image that can give us, like, a bunch of ideas. Look at this. Just a lineup of different shaped cloaks. We can just play around with this. Oh, that's that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah, because I don't want it just to be a flat cloak. You know, I do want it to be sort of more angular, have some more... So, like, nothing like the Japanese one, for example, where it's just, like, a flat line cut off. I've done that way too many times, and I need to, like, try and um, diversify shit. But, like, this sort of, like, different lengths and different shapes that come out from it just being draped over the shoulders, you know? Uh, this the, the Canadian one really speaks to me for some reason. Like, it, it, it's given me some cool-ass vibes, but, like, also, like, the German one. I, I don't even know what the hell's going on there. Um, that's, so the front is a corner, and then, are those two other corners? Is this just three corners? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to look for an image of them being splayed out. You know, so I can actually tell what the hell they look like. Um. Hold on, but also, I just found some images of people actually wearing them. Which is nice. Because having them be on an actual body gives a lot more perspective. This canvas is getting very messy with references, but that's just how it is. Okay, like this. And... Uh... Ah, here it is, splayed out. There we go. I found one splayed out, and yeah, it is just a big square with the buttons being on, on one side. And that's what gives it, like, it, its, its shape, which is actually quite neat. So yeah, you could totally, like, splay this out. So that's why the buttons are off to one side, because it's using this edge, and then, like, a weird collar, and then this edge. Huh. I second pauldrons? Okay, hold on. I completely forgot what pauldrons are. Right, the shoulder things. Um, yeah, we might have some sort of pauldrons. Plus sprint armor, definitely. Some sort of pauldrons might be interesting. We'll have to see. Search up a salad. Also, uh, any everybody clap. We have 420 viewers right now. The nice number. Salad. Uh, but yeah, this is 
actually the highest amount of viewers I've had on a stream, I think. So uh, welcome, welcome, everybody. I hope you're enjoying this. No, no. Uh, no, not this helmet. I'm not really looking for more helmet references at the moment. Well, let me look at World War One shoes. Because that's also another thing that I need to think about is the shoes. Oh, these are drippy. My god. Let's go with the SpongeBob style fucking beautiful long boots. That's definitely I'm I'm something like this for sure. I gotta, right? You gotta. You gotta get the like that fucking walking sound. These are good too, actually. We're gonna get way too many references on on, on the screen, but that's fine. Um, oh, but these are good too. Fuck. No, oh, these are good too. The trip is amazing. Yeah, I like these too. If like um the strap on like i don't even know what shin guards shin pieces of cloth i don't know if that's like fully a part of the boot or if it's like this kind of boot underneath and then just that attached well, let me blow my nose i'm sniffing Rename the stream to Wizard Trip. Holy shit. What are what are these these boots? God. Definitely not going with this, but I just want to show you. God damn. Fellow soldier walking down the trenches with these fucking things on, everybody's looking. Everybody's turning their head like, yo! God damn! Who's strutting? Strutting in these fucking trenches. Oh, Expelled Mystery. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Stupid sexy shoes. Yeah, the sexiest trench drip. God. This is the kind of drip that you put on. The the enemy can't shoot you because you, they're just so fucking. You're just so hot in these shoes. They're like, God damn, I can't shoot this guy. He's he's fucking slaying. <laughs> yeah, definitely not having those. Dom uh, shoes. <laughs> Okay, now let me look for some stuff. Okay, this this is gonna this is gonna be a bit confusing. Right, but just hear me out. We're gonna take tie pants as inspiration as well. So we're going this this route. 
Trust me with this. It'll it'll come together. This thing. I'm sorting some stuff. There we go. Give them harem pants? What are harem pants? Yeah. But yeah, you know what kind of vibes these give me? Because like if you if you make the connection. Hold on, hold on. Let me cook. Where are they? Where are they? They're they're kind of given they're kind of given this vibe, huh? Like this. Like the, the poofy military pants. I, I don't know who wore them. Turkish clothes would fit? Would be lit? Okay, let me, let me search up Turkish clothes. Uh, any particular Turkish clothes? That that you think might work, or or just Turkish Turkish clothes in general? Because I searched it up and it's quite a bit of a, you know, it's it's a lot of things. That's UK. Oh, okay. Medieval Turkish drip. Hold on, let me search this up. Medieval Turkish drip. Wait, no, like <laughs> clothes. Okay, okay, I see it. I see it. They got the poofy pants too. One thousand six hundred clothes. How am I gonna fit this? What? How's that work? Okay, okay, can you help me? I, I like this, but I don't know what is going on. Um, he, he has the sleeves out of the side, but they're like hanging off his arm. Does that mean he just has... Is that just the jacket fucking hanging off? Like, like this? And then he has his actual shoulder here, but it's covering the shoulder, so I'm like, is there an extra hole or something? But I do like that. Unless it's not a sleeve and it's just like some very long cloth. Like it's actually just a very like long piece of cloth. Tabard? Okay, hold on. It's like a t-shirt. Oh, okay. So that is just the sleeve being like really long. Extra buttons. Okay, hold on. I got like a bunch of tabs open. Let me let me sift through these. Uh, Cause I I do want extra buttons like this shit. Like we're we're definitely doing stuff like this. I feel. Um. Same as over here. 
so we can mix like this sort of pattern on top of like a garment like this and then sort of switch out the pants with this kind of shape pants instead so uh like the medieval ones go like very poofy out like this but the Thai ones sort of go out and then narrow down at the at the leg which might be interesting or like or this this is also fucking killer but i don't even know what the hell is going on here i like this bundle in the front but i don't know what is going on there you know and then like like i feel like this is too medieval right it gives too much medieval vibes but as soon as we like put these sort of sort of like uh, decorations on it's going to start pulling it back to military again right the the fine balance we're talking about the crux front bushel i don't know it'll look cool yeah i i think and then like here around the neck if the collar is high like that we can also have the um uh i don't actually have a reference of that but yeah like just like side things on the oh here here shit like this on the side of the collar as well and then if the these shoulder things come in that's definitely going to give it more military and then the drippy shoes as well. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna be fucking awesome. I think we're good on reference photos now. Yeah, I think so. I think so too. I think so too. But yeah, I'm still on the fence with if I want them to have any armor or not. So we're gonna see. We're gonna play around with it. We're gonna play around with it. Yeah, let me merge all of these together there you go and then we can make it smaller so we actually have space to draw okay let's see what we can come up with There you go. So, um, I think we're gonna go cloakless for now. So let's remove the cloak from the equation, because otherwise, you know, we're not gonna see shit. Uh, from <laughs> we're not gonna see the outfit at all. Yes, exactly. What? Maybe a one-sided armor. Maybe they have half armor. True. 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 Actually. Let me let me write that down. Half armor. Okay, so let's try to just get the general shapes first. So I like this shape. I, I like the torso being this shape because it also follows, you know, the, the metamorphosis of mages where the torso elongates. But I like how this, like, gives the... There's, like, a point at the end like this. And I also like how this flares out to, like, prepare for the plumage. So we might do something like that and then like the big poof in front you know and then like let's let's just try to copy this for now just big old fucking plumage like way too big uh then like knee straps perhaps and then um, at first I was thinking that it would poof out again, but maybe we go right into the boot. Like, we go right into... Uh, also, by the way, if, if... I'm not worried about proportions, I'm not worried about perfect anatomy, we're just trying to get the vibe across. 
Okay, then like the straps, like these things, and then uh, the booties. Uh, and I was thinking about having pointy shoes, but I, I thought that was going a little too silly for like the military stuff. Maybe for like um, special occasions and shit like that it might work, but for, for military I think not going pointy is fine. Okay, then I was also thinking having these be, like, have the little little side hairs. I forgot what those are called, but we might be able to do, like, little side hairs. If we go, like, full crazy, we might want to do, like, fucking multiple layer side hairs. Like, full on crazy levels of drip. What vibe are you going for? I don't know yet. We're we're looking for it. We're searching, you know? This is this is this is where we have fun, play around, try to see what we can come up with. Yeah? Multiple tassels. Am I going too far? I don't think so. But yeah, slightly slightly pointed. I, I agree with that. Like give them give them a slight point. You know, just enough to, to elude to them being being mage. Okay, cool. Now, um we get the the high collar thing going on and the the arms like this. Uh, we might want to have like a cut in the in the cloth here because I'm guessing this isn't the last like this isn't just one layer uh, there's probably an undergarment as well that's looser might want to show that through the the sleeve there or the the armpit uh, then it might show out or show up here as well if we want we can have like rolled up sleeves perhaps like this, with buttons, you know, more buttons, fucking, that shit. Okay, now, we go, we go hog wild with the buttons, bam, 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 more buttons. Okay, and then like, some shit on the side of the neck too. He's looking a little too flimsy right now. Gotta bulk him out a little. Yeah. You see, you see, it's it's starting mana input. No no. Let's take it one step at a time. I'm not slamming everything onto this guy all at once. Close the first and then like you focus on one bit at a time. Don't do everything at once. Cause then, you know. Kind of looks like Aladdin. I, I don't know what Aladdin looks like. But yeah, like that. Or we could have... Okay, uh, hopefully the pouches are going to pull it back together into like a more military look as soon as we put like the pouches and straps on oh right um this is definitely not functionally good but i wanted the pou the pouches straps of Verus. like the soldiers they can choose to put the pouches on the same side or the straps down just straight down but they like to make the pouches resemble the decorations that the pillarmen have. So they often like cross them over uh, because the pillarmen have like decorative bands over uh, that go over their chests that go like cross over each other. So I was thinking often they would do that as well. Like that. And maybe if we if we like focus on it being more pretty, um, 
the instead of the belt being like really thin, we can have it be like overly thick, like this, uh, with like the pouches, and then have like some sort of pattern, you know, all decorative like this, like something you'd see on um, like if you're tying like a like a thing around your waist, I forgot this shit. You know, get like that sort of vibe across. Yeah, there you go. I think that is giving enough of a military vibe, actually. I think so. Okay, let me let me put the head in. That's let me draw the head. Okay, there. Yeah, and then the the patterns on the pants. We got to think too that these are like very special units, so it doesn't matter if they look a little over the top cuz they're they're mages, you know. They're the special fucking he is drippy. Oh, I, I think so, too. He's fucking... He's dripped out. You can make the collar hide the lips. Uh, that's sort of more of a Rom thing. Like, Rom pulls the collar up really high. I, I'd say, like, the collar stays low, and then the poncho, or, or like, the, the cloth that covers it, sort of, like, hides the whole face or, or hides the whole neck and shit so it basically like ends up like this okay helmet helmet um let's see so i do like the helmet being really tall god this is gonna look goofy trust the process okay let's just copy these helmets for now and then come up with more interesting ways to do it or exaggerate it so first we can have a lip go down like this and the lip go up or we can have the the face thing going on But then, okay, if we have something on the head, we have to have some armor on the body. Right? Because it has to balance out, and if we just have it on the head, it doesn't look right. So we do have to have some armor on the body, uh, which means it's going to cover up the buttons, but that's fine. So, armor on the body, if we do have it... Okay, let me make a separate version of this guy. We're gonna do a half plate. Uh, so let's erase this. So the half plate would be here. And then the issue is, because the torso of the mage is really long, we don't sadly get that sort of, like, nice uh, hourglass shape that we would want, because the, 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 the ribs go, like, way till down here. So we can't do that. It sort of has to be elongated. But we can exaggerate it at here, I guess. And then give it, like, um... Like some some plates here, maybe? Or is that gonna look too rom? We might just wanna go for chest plate and leave it at that, no leg protection. Weren't we saying something about pauldrons as well? 
pauldrons might be a way to go. Um, but like not heavy or hmm, actually, do we want like full on? Okay, this is also, by the way, what I, I completely forgot. It's a kinetic mage specifically. So what we might want to do is give it like one heavy pauldron because he has to put the buttstock of his rifle. Jesus Christ, we have 500 viewers. Welcome, everybody. God damn. But yeah, we might want to put just one pauldron with like the, the plate in front on one side where he puts the buttstock. So just have like one that's big old like this. Uh -huh, but streamless could give him horns. I don't think horns is gonna be the right way to go. It's trying too hard. I I always say like trying too hard when it's like if if a design like okay we're trying to like sort of stay realistic right. So like if we put like skulls on it or if you put horns on it, that's for me that feels like it's trying too hard. Like the design is trying too hard to be cool. By, you know, using those classic skulls, horns, bones, fucking, you know? So I normally try to avoid those. Unless there's, like, a really good reason to have them. Like, for example, if it's, like, a tribal shit or, like, barbaric uh, fucking tribe that just kills and slaughters people and shit like that. Yeah, sure, go, go ahead. Fucking go wild with bones and horns and shit, you know? But for, like, mage soldiers, horns ain't gonna be the thing. The Korean Hossa. Hold on, let me let me stretch that up. Oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's what that's what we're using as reference already. This thing. Okay, do we wanna hold on. Um let's see. I mean the thing is the chest plate doesn't really have any articulation, even in like those uh other outfits so it's only at like the waist here that the plates start like separating and stuff um but the thing is mages grow over time like they get longer so armor ain't gonna like if if you're expecting to equip a soldier with armor and get them into the war zone not very soon but like eventually their armor is not gonna fit and that wouldn't be good so I feel like what we might want to do is cut the armor in half, pretty much, like this, and then have sort of a strap. So the the armor is in two halves uh, that are overlapping, and when the body grows, you can pretty much just undo the straps, stretch a little, and then put them back in. <laughs> If that makes sense. Adjustable armor. Is there a type of adjustable armor? I don't know. Um, this might be a really goofy way to do it. Why does he have a fanny pack? I mean, it's it's for soldier shit. Just like, I, I drew just random packs for now, but uh, he'd have one specifically for, like, uh, kindling would be in the front, and then, like, mana potions off to the side. Uh, and then, like, additional thimbles and stuff like that, backup thimbles. Um, so enough stuff to, like, be able to cast spells. Oh, and also just uh, the uh, the input. And also, oh, right, how the fuck is he going to put in the input when he has armor on? So let's give him, I mean, do we want to go goofy with it? Just give him a fucking belly button? Just give him a belly button. Which I think is going to give, like, I honestly, that's going to be, like, a pretty weird aesthetic. Maybe they literally, like, make the armor, you know, like, uh, the, the Roman fucking, like, give it a six-pack kind of shit? Like, they draw, they, they make the armor have, like, a chest and, and, like, a stomach. Gives me some, like, umbilical cord vibes. But then, you know, that can have the line that connects to the, 
to the input. And then also with the with the squire that we were talking about. Um when when the squire wants to like attach additional inputs uh, onto the soldier, they would just like have like a different port here in the front. So you can have like some really satisfying like wire works or or like connecting con connecting connecting points happening in front. Like if we zoom in, it could definitely be like a like here's the stomach, and then it has the 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 normal port going off for the input, and then an additional like side thing with like a latch like this for the other cables it's gonna give like sort of medical vibes as well like medical equipment with like all the tubes and shit which i think is 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 gonna be a good way to go about it uh make the input part of the armor so like uh no no i don't think making the input part of the armor uh is gonna be good I think having things be modular and separate, if if it's like really custom shit, I feel like yes, having the uh, input be part of the armor, but for like the general soldier, having the armor separate and then the input separate, because then the input's like pretty heavy, you know? Uh, so if, if you had to have it on you, you'd probably want it to be detachable so you can let that weight go when you want to, you know? Yeah, so uh, let me give it some color. Obviously, we're not done with the design, but I'm going to put some color on it just so we can see the ratio of armor plates to everything else, uh, which is going to give us a lot better of an idea of if we're getting, uh, if we're on the right track. Yeah. I do this sometimes, because sometimes it's hard to tell. If everything's gray, it's hard to tell if, like, there's a satisfying ratio of detail or, or like, metal to cloth if you're, you know. And then everything else is cloth. What? That's an ugly ass green. There you go. We're going to have to figure out the color scheme as well, which I was thinking was going to be more bluish uh, because Rom has like green like this. So we might want to go like more blue with it. God, that's ugly. How? Where do I go with it? Hold on, hold on. That, maybe? Maybe that. Okay. And then the pouches. Brown. I forgot the straps. Well, let me just draw in the straps like that. Uh, and then, actually, do we want to go, like, red for the pants? Maybe some red. Well, uh, I'm going to adjust the colors a bit. Let me... Yeah, the blue is going to have to be more gray to fit with that. Something like that. I mean, I like that ratio, though. What do you think? The ratio of of metal plates to cloth, I think, is good. Just have the chest armor and, like, one, one pauldron. Exclamation point Discord. Oh, I'm sorry, that doesn't work. Hold on. Uh, if, if, if any of you want to join the Discord, I'll send the link into the chat. Give me just a sec. Um, hold on.
give him knee pads? I mean, he has knee pads, and they're just really badly drawn. Why is the chat not working? I can't see the... Huh? I, I can't see my own chat. Ah, there you go. There you go. Uh, the Discord is in the chat right now. So if anybody wants to join the Discord, you're welcome to. Um, I'm in there very often, by the way. Uh, like, in the VC. I, I like being in the VC. So if you want to, like, talk to me and shit like that, uh, you're welcome to join the VC anytime. Uh, I'm... I was gonna say, I'm just a normal guy. But normal isn't really right, but I'm just a guy, so don't worry. There's no, like, oh, Simon, how do I talk to him? I'm just a dude. Like, you can just talk to me. But yeah, I'm in there quite often. Do your mages use wands? Uh, they use... I, I, I don't know what to call them yet. There's the outputs, obviously. You could call them outputs, but that doesn't really... Uh, isn't quite right. But they do use, like, amplifiers, like, rifles and stuff like that, but that's not really a wand. None of them really use wands, because what's the point of having a wand that just amplifies your magic a little bit if you could just have a whole fucking staff, like a big old staff, and just use use that instead? Um, just a little guy, yeah. Call it a focus? True, a focus is actually a really good name for that. Hold on, let me write that down. Uh, input, input, input. Focus. Concealability? I mean, I guess, but, like, the thing is, if you want it to be concealable, then just use an input. Like, the tip of your finger thing. Just use that. That's even more concealable. You know? Or a ring. Just have it be your ring. You know? Or, like, in the middle of your palm. Like, there's more things that can be more... That's why it's like, why would you have wands? Because you could either just have more concealable things, or better things. Unless it's... I don't know, maybe it's like, you don't want to carry out around a giant thing, or a big staff, so you'd rather carry something smaller that still amplifies it a certain amount, but not as much as a staff. Input could be no, 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 no. Here, I'm, I'm not asking for changing names of the inputs and outputs. The focus would just be a separate thing from an output. So the output is the thimbles that you have on the tip of your finger, and then you can have an additional thing, like that you hold to amplify it. Uh, but we're not changing the names of inputs and outputs because I love how simple it is, and it is very, I wouldn't say memorable because it's just a simple word, but it's easy to remember, right? Input and output. That's it. If I give it a fancy name, it's going to be even harder to remember, and that's already... Like, the the magic system already has enough shit, so if I just make it more complicated, like, give it unique names as well, it's just going to make it hard to remember. You know, so I think it's... The simplicity of just calling them inputs, outputs, is good. The same as um, the thing that you use to cast spells being called kindling. You know, I didn't want to come up with a new word, just, just use kindling. But yeah, okay, this is good. This is good. I like this. Uh, we can definitely play around with it more. Like, obviously, this is the first sketch, uh, and, and you can definitely come up with better as you keep going, so that's what we're gonna do. But it's a good start. It is definitely a good start. So let me save or, or make a group out of this and write it. Um, idea one. There you go. Make it disappear. I don't want it on my screen because it's going to influence my next concept too much. Although, I'm going to write down... Okay, this, this is a good thing that I can do. Uh, I'm going to write down which parts of it I like so we can, you know, gain something from it. I do like the helmet and mask combo. So helmet and mask combo is good. Uh, the ratio of metal... Uh, 
metal to cloth is good. Um, I like the, I like the over-exaggerated socks. Definitely can play around with that more. Maybe want to try using some different shoes. Perhaps, uh, these shoes instead, like longer, that go more up than just here. But I do also like the, the strap idea. I like that as well. Hmm. What are these pieces of cloth used for? I just copied it from this, but I don't even know what the hell they do. I'm feeling like they tie on to... I mean, it would make sense. Like, you could literally just have it be two pieces of cloth that connect to the the top of the armor and just have it, like, hook on to the socks to hold them on. <laughs> it would be quite goofy, but it would make sense. Um, Perhaps, like, their socks keep rolling down or something, and they just want to hold them up. Uh, Verus, yeah, Verus is the country that worships the pillars. Sock suspenders? Yeah, it's sock suspenders. Mages and fishnets? How dare you? Wait, did you delete that message or did you like get fucking banned for it for some reason? I hope you didn't. I don't think I... You just said... Uh, stockings, I think, so... Are swords used by soldiers? I'd say like knives and, and such. So, you, you might have like a knife on you for, you know, general use and stuff like that. You wouldn't really want to use it in combat unless it's necessary. You'd have a bayonet on the end of your weapon, or what we're playing around with is, like, having very weird things at the end of your weapon to defend yourself with. So not just, like, bayonets, but also, um, like, axes and, and like, more polearm heads and stuff like that. Obviously, it doesn't make sense in the real world, because... Weapons are fragile, and you wouldn't want to beat someone over the head with your weapon. But it's a fantasy world, so we can do whatever we want. But for mages, I don't really think that a knife would be necessary. And they might have one just in case, but an acceleration mage, they could just cast acceleration on you and launch you across the battlefield. <laughs> Like, they can still cast their spells with their thimbles on their fingers if you get close to them. So you could... Or they could just accelerate a rock. Like, they could just pick up anything off the ground and just accelerate it at you. Punch a hole straight... Well, it wouldn't be that strong, but they'd definitely, like, knock you out or give you a good bruise. Dent your armor. Do they have electricity yet? No. No. No, no electricity. A, a gun at the end of a gun? Holy shit. Well, now now you're innovating. Slow down there, fucking. Soon we're gonna be in the future. If you keep thinking like that. We're gonna have fucking spaceships in the world. Power word move. Steam engines? I'm still stuck on steam engines. Because, like... Um, they have magic engines, but that just seems like, like what I was thinking was basically because they have magic, the natural path of like how people develop technology sort of changed because they discovered magic. So the main focus is with developing things or developing things using magic because if you discover magic, you'll be like, oh, fuck, I focus on this shit instead of, you know, trying to figure out steam engines. So I feel like they did figure out engines, but it's just powered by mana and, and ifs instead of, you know, boiling steam. What happens if a mage's input gets shot or damaged? 
depends on how much, but I feel like it could definitely prohibit the mage from being able to take in magic if it's damaged enough, or, like, the line detaches. Which, in that case, you might need to, like, if the mage is, like, very desperate to try and, like, continue fighting, they might need to, like, stab themselves with the input. So, like, take the end of the, you know, the end of the cable and, like, just stab it into themselves uh, and hold it in place to, like, be able to take in mana. But that's obviously would be, like, really last resort kind of shit. Most would probably just run. Well, actually, mages are fucking crazy. Yeah, they'd probably do that. They'd just be like... Stone face, stab it into their fucking chest. <laughs> Keep going. What are the cables made of? Normally gold. Because uh, it's the best. But if if you're looking at a, like a lesser mage, maybe. Silvers or coppers. Mana withdraw symptoms? No. Well, okay. Yes. The thing is, mana inherently stabilizes things. Like, I, 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 I'm gonna try explaining this because it's I, I haven't tried explaining it before. But basically, mana keeps things the way they are to a certain degree. So somebody who's dying, if they have mana in them, would probably stay alive longer. And it would slowly take away the mana uh, while, you know, keeping them alive. If, if you can visualize this, it's basically, okay, if a mage gets shot, if a mage gets shot and it punches a hole through an artery, right? So this is, this is an artery and it's severed. Right? And there's a fucking hole through them. Mana does this weird thing where it makes it so things keep going the way they're supposed to for a certain amount of time. So, what if you looked into the hole where they got shot, you would see that, weirdly enough, the blood is not instantly leaking out of them and they're bleeding out. The blood will still follow the path of the non-existent artery that used to be there. So it'll just be like laminar flow-esque, just fucking coming out of one hole and into the other without deviating. It's a bit weird. I, I don't know how to describe it yet. But if the mana runs out, then obviously that stops. And... Some mages are in such critical condition, like their mana morphosis has sort of developed so far, that if they didn't have, like, mana in them and shit, I don't think they would survive long. Um, like, for example, uh, fire mages, like combustion mages, they're fucking burnt from head to toe, pretty much, and the mana is sort of, like, keeping them together. Um, so, like, they'd be burning up if, if they ran out of... Well, that wouldn't really make sense, because the mana is the thing that's burning them up, so if they didn't have mana, they'd also not be burning. But I feel like they'd succumb to their wounds and, like, burns and stuff like that quite soon after. Uh, but, like, okay, uh, healing mages. Healing mages would definitely die very quickly if if they didn't have mana in them, because healing mages are fucked. <laughs> like, their bones, like, grew into the muscles and everything, and they're in constant pain while moving and creaking along, and they have fucking tumors and shit. I don't think they'll make it long after mana gets out of their bodies. Yeah. But the fun thing is, that also means you can pretty much attach things to you. Like, yeah, yeah, a fucking Godric the Grafted style. You could attach another person's arm to you, and as long as you have mana circulating through you, that wouldn't get... If, if you did it cleanly, your body wouldn't reject it. You know? Until you run out of mana. So you could make a fucking abomination, pretty much, and have mana cycle through it, but as soon as the mana stops, shit starts rotting and and falling apart and reject getting rejected, you know, pus and blah blah blah. So yeah, fun. Mana gets rid of organ rejection? Yes. Yes, it does. 
but obviously that wastes an amount of mana. Like, you lose an amount of mana. Let's say, uh, basically, like, losing mana per second kind of thing going on. So, obviously, if you want to, like, transplant an organ, it would be a lot better if you didn't have an organ that would be rejected, because then there wouldn't be any mana wasted in keeping that stable, right? So, obviously, still having proper organs that are the correct ones for you is still good. But if you don't, you can still do a wrong one, but then, you know, you'd basically be reliant on mana uh, to survive. Is there anything that can forcefully remove mana? Yes. Yes, there is. Um, there's... Uh, I, I haven't... I don't have a proper name for them yet, but they're mages that are focused on the extraction and putting in of mana. Uh, they're used to make uh, mana potions. Like, they're... They, they are the ones that make mana potions. They have, like, these specific sort of uh, devices, like, tables built for them with, like, uh, they use inputs on a stick. <laughs> How am I going to explain this? They use inputs on a stick to basically forcefully suck mana out of things, um, and then they can put mana back into things as well. Their whole thing is uh, doing it with... As as little thought as possible because mana is affected by thought that's how you cast spells so if you want to put in pure mana without any you know any of it going to waste then you have to have as little thought as possible so you're pretty much like a zen meditative fucking you know magic user that just no brain <laughs> puts mana into things but yeah they're also the guys who make so they make mana potions they make kindling because uh, kindling goes through a process called cycling where you put mana into something and then take it out and then put it in again and take it out over and over again to make that material more susceptible to mana. It makes it better and more efficient to use for spellcasting. You know, it unfurls it. So you cycle a material to unfurl it and then it becomes unfurled. So uh, the gunpowder that excel or the gunpowder that uh combustion mages use to cast combustion spells that's unfurled gunpowder because you can use normal gunpowder to cast combustion spells but if you want to min max if we're talking game terms min maxing is using unfurled gunpowder and the quality of kindling depends on how many times it has been cycled so something might have been cycled 50 times that's you know decent quality unfurled gunpowder but if you've uncycled it fucking a thousand times bougie ass high quality five star wagyu gunpowder it's probably been like fucking unfurled a thousand times you know kissed by the head chef and and gave a bedtime story before putting into the container style gunpowder But yeah, that's that's some... But yes, there you go. That's the long answer to, yes, you can take mana out of things. <laughs> Sorry it took so long. Wagyu gunpowder. Yeah, where were we? We, we sort of got off track. Okay, uh, I like the metal cloth ratio. I do like the... The, um... Hand... What is that called? The fucking... The things on the hands. Or the... the Sleeves. Sleeves, right? Sleeves. Yeah. Sleeves. There you go. Dollar store gunpowder. Cuffs? Yeah, cuffs. Cuffs. Cuffs, cuffs, cuffs. Um, cool. And I like the neck thing as well. I also... God. So, the the original concepts for Verusian soldiers have the arms be puffy. So, the arm... The, the arm sleeves are, like, puffy as well, like the medieval type. But I really like the silhouette of the legs being puffy and the arms being sleek. It's so sick, I think. 
Like that that gives such a cool fucking look to them. I might want to keep. But let's let's not like settle down yet. Let's try and play around with it more. Okay. So we're gonna go like really rough with it. Uh just seeing what I can come up with. So let's keep the color the same. Uh we can exaggerate the armor like this. Maybe add more sections to it this time. Like that. And then we can perhaps make it so the... Yeah, let's try going puffy. Just just to see how that looks. A puffy and then elbow. Yeah, and then maybe we can do like the the buttons so we can still keep like a a lot of buttons on the design okay and then the pouches Okay, then the armor puffs out like that and then instead of the puffy pants being like wide all the way down let's have it like narrowed down this guy's got a dumpy holy shit with <laughs> if we have the narrow pants as well that's gonna fly god damn holy shit again classic fucking Mage walking down the fucking trenches, everybody's gonna be turning their head, cocking their head back instantly, and just like, oh, hold on, did I just see that right? What the fuck just walked past me? Yeah, I, I, I might want to draw this from a different angle, because this just makes... <laughs> Rule 34, nah, don't, no, no, not yet, please. Please, not yet. But yeah, not like to the back, more to the side. Like, like this pants. I, I want more this pants. No, I, I, okay. Has somebody figured out what the hell this stuff is yet? The plumage in the front? Because I still want to keep that. I like it a lot, but I just don't know what the hell it is. Hear me out. No. I'm not hearing anybody out. Whoops. And then the uh, longer boots. Give them a bit of a point. And then the uh, lots of things on the side. Okay, how do we, if I make the shoulder more like, what if I have it more like 
a little bit down the arm, this, and then we can have like identifying markers or like uh, decorative metals or something like down the side that has the this. Oh, what if we do like really one-sided design or like lopsided design, have one of the sleeves be poofy and the other one be not poofy? Maybe that might be a bit too crazy, but let's see. Thank you for the two euros. Psst. Feathers. Colorful feathers. Feathers might be interesting, actually. Let me write that down. Feathers. How many mages does it take to kill a witch? One, if they're good. I mean, if you catch them by surprise, you can just shoot them. Witches aren't bulletproof. You don't even need a mage. You can just get a guy with a gun. Um, but yeah, something like this, maybe. I'm, I mean, that ain't half bad, I'd say. Give me the little straps as well. Yeah, that ain't half bad. With, like, the one-sided puffy sleeve. I mean, it could make sense, literally, because, you know, the, the shock recoil that they need to absorb on one side, just, so just have it, like, really fucking padded out. Maybe we go, like, full send and just have it be a fucking pillow. Like, instead of having it be, uh, like, a hard, just metal pad, maybe have it be metal pad and then, like, cushion material. Like this. Underneath it. Right? Because then it really shows that this is specifically an, an acceleration mage. And then it also makes sense if... Wait, no. Because if the, if the rifle's on that side, then the arm that you use to accelerate is also on that side, which means this arm is really fucking long. Imbue armor with magic. I mean, you can't just permanently imbue something with magic. Uh, you'd have to have it, you know, you'd have to have uh, ifs on it, and then also, how do you call it? Uh, fuel it with mana, and I don't know what you'd use it to to do. I mean, you can have armor that has motors like magic motors on it i guess to like enhance your movement and stuff yeah you could make like an exosuit i guess uh but yeah maybe we want uh that that cut sleeve thing we might want to do that where the sleeve might have an extra hole here where we can fold it up so you can pretty much fold up the the thing to expose the arm, which is, you know, the really long one. God, this might be... Yeah, that might be a fucking... This might be the way to go. Uh, or not... I think that's a little short. We might want to... Take it up there. Uh, 
Um, mages, how common mages are. Um, they're definitely sort of like special forces esque. Uh, I don't know how common Navy SEALs are, but I guess it could give that sort of idea. Like Navy SEALs esque. You know, you'd be lucky if you saw one. You know, like you'd brag to your, well, brag or talk t amongst your, your, your fellow soldiers, just like, hey, I saw a mage. It's like, what? What did he look like? Well, he was fucking massive. You know? He was gigantic. Like, towering over the trenches. He had to, like, hunch down to hide away. Stuff like that. It was terrifying, too, though. Didn't say a peep. Didn't say shit. But did you see him in action? Well, yeah. He was an acceleration mage. You know? I heard it ringing from, like, way down the trench. I wasn't next to him, but... I definitely heard what the fuck he was doing. You know, stuff like that. There are 2,500 Navy SEALs in America. Yeah, then that would make sense, I'd say. Uh, not the exact number, but just like, yeah, I, I feel like that'd be that'd be right, sort of. Do acceleration mages have ear protections? I feel like everybody would have ear protection. I don't want my my soldiers going deaf. That's not going to be very useful. Um, Okay, she tells you not to worry about. But yeah, I do like the one-sided approach, but we gotta figure out a way to... I, I don't know if I want the sleeve being pulled up like that. We gotta figure out a way to... Um, give the arm space, because the arm's gonna grow a lot more than everything else. Is um, Bruce also controlling knowledge of magic by the state uh, through the church, or is that a different system? No, no, I, I would say they definitely do control knowledge of magic. Um, most countries that have magic sort of control knowledge of magic, because if you know something they don't, you don't really want to give it away. Um, a country that was really adamant in controlling their magic knowledge was um burla burla like both verus and rom were fucking they 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 were fucking annoyed by uh burla and the extent that they are not willing to sell their uh or are not willing to share uh, their magic research burla was basically the capital of magic research for like a really long time where they were basically like rumor has it that they were doing shit that like other countries couldn't even dream of you know and now that the country is basically has it's sunken into a into a swamp the the rumors have only gotten more exaggerated you know uh rom and Baru soldiers will tell each other like oh shit have you heard about fucking like there's basically like a philosopher's stone in Burla. They figured out a way to turn copper into gold, or they figured out a, a way to to uh, move things from one place to another without actually moving it like through space or shit like that. Like just over-exaggerated or maybe true rumors uh, about Burla. 
And that's why, like, now that Burla has basically turned into ruins, both Ram and Varus, like, fight over the chance to try and explore those ruins because they want to get the secrets that might might have been left there within those ruins, uh, especially the secret to the mana core, uh, because Burla made the mana core, um, but, you know, they didn't, like, share the knowledge of how to make the mana core with Verus. They only... Um, they only built it in Verus. But yeah. Shabby, yeah, Burla lore. But a, a, a common thing you might, or not a common, but uh, one of the main ways people in this time get to interact with Burla would probably be uh, doubled steel. Uh, Shabby, you like this? Uh, or, yeah, doubled steel, which is basically a type of steel that Burla used to make, uh, which was incredibly high quality, to the point where the other countries have not figured out how to remake that steel. They're trying to re-engineer it, but none have succeeded. So there are some very prized weapons that might be circulated amongst soldiers or amongst the higher ranks that are weapons that are made out of doubled steel. Um which are lighter or dur more durable or prettier um, than all the others, but, you know, there's only that many of them because Burla is gone. Burla is nothing in the face of the magnificent dwarven crafts. True. True. A lot of people definitely could argue that that dwarven craftsmanship is better than than uh, Burla's, but who knows? Who knows? It's hard to say because um, yeah, both are really good, and I I I mean I I'd say the dwarven craft is definitely built more on being sturdy and heavy. Like, it's not built to be light. It's built to survive a fucking bomb, you know? They they build shit that lasts, but if you can lift it easily or not, that's that's up to you. That's not their problem. Burla is gone. Well, gone in the sense of... They're, it's ruins. Uh, they're inhabited by the Burla men, uh, but we're eventually going to have to talk about that in a video. I don't want to get into too much detail, um, but just know that Burla was the capital of magic, and it was ruined sometime between the mana core going awry and the war happening. Why can't they access the ruins? There was enough. I, I didn't say anything about them not being able to access the ruins. There's just a lot of contending powers trying to get a hold of the ruins. And there's also the Burlaman at the ruins. So it's a bit of a. Also, just the, the general area around Burla has turned into a fucking nightmare. It's basically like a swampland flooded all the time with all of the most horrid creatures within it. So. You, you'd have a hard time just getting to the city, even if you didn't have to contend with opposing soldiers from Verus or Rom or the Burla men. Uh, Bodar, thank you for the 50 sec. Uh, how many types of mages are there? And do they have, like, more than one spell? Or can an acceleration mage, for example, only shoot bullets? I mean, uh, I, I, in the magic video, I do cover the types of mages there are, but to give you a quick rundown, there's combustion mages, disintegration mages, uh, vocalists, fumigation, kinetic, which is the acceleration, um, and, god, what else is there? Um, uh, 
there's the unfurling ones, like the ones that just focus on using mana. Uh, we're also thinking about illusion mages, which would be the same as vocalists, or vocalists would just be a subcategory of illusion mages, pretty much. Um, and I oh, and physical mages. And I think that's about it. And when it comes to the spells that they cast, you can sort of just get an idea of what they are able to cast by thinking about what the concept is about. Acceleration magic or, or mages are about accelerating things. So it's not necessarily bullets. They can accelerate pretty much anything. The only rule is they can accelerate things away from themselves. They can't really do it towards themselves. Um, but besides that, they can pretty much accelerate anything. You know, if it's not too big. Terraforming. Yeah, terraforming. I think I did say terraforming. I said disintegration, which is a part of terraforming. Oh, healing mages. I forgot healing. Uh, they don't know yet what became of Burla. People are trying to figure out what became of Burla. Um... Basically, they lost contact with Burla after the war happened because, you know, you gotta focus on the fucking war. And as the war zone sort of grew, it finally, like, reached the location of Burla. And when they eventually saw Burla, after a long, many, many years of not being in contact with them, it's ruins. So... Would chainmail attract mana? A little bit. I would say yes. It's a repeating pattern, which means yes. It would definitely attract mana. Hmm. Manipulate both ends. <coughs> For slowing down things. I mean, I feel like acceleration mages could definitely slow things down if they're coming at you. But that would just be... It's not like you're slowing things down. You're just accelerating them in the opposite direction from where they're coming from. So it's not like you're slowing them down. You're just pushing them away from you. Which is still within the rule set of what acceleration mages can do. Though, it'd be a bit hard to accelerate a bullet away from you, because you'd have to have a reaction time to notice that a bullet is coming towards you. But yeah. No, um, the reason I changed the name to Kinetic Magic is just because of this reason, because a lot of people misunderstand that acceleration magic literally speeds things up like fucking time. It doesn't. It just accelerates things away from you. So kinetic magic sort of fits more, because that, you know, makes it more clear that you're not, like, speeding up the passage of time on something. Like, oh, can you accelerate something so it ages faster? No, that's not what acceleration magic is. It's kinetic. But I keep saying acceleration magic because... That's what I called it in the start, so it's hard to change now. But that doesn't mean it's the wrong thing to call it. I just say, in the world, probably people use it interchangeably. So, some people say acceleration magic, some people say kinetic. Can you accelerate yourself? Yes, you could. Not recommended. You could pretty much, like, rocket jump yourself around the place. Or, you, it wouldn't be rocket jump. It would be more like you're tugging on yourself. Which I don't think would be a stable way of moving. Like, you, you'd definitely die. 
most likely die if you try doing it like over a fair enough distance. Could tattoos be used as inputs? Yes. Though I would doubt they would be much effective. Because they're two-dimensional, and also there's like very little material within tattoos. So it would definitely work, 100%, but it would just be very inefficient. Gliders could work, but uh, they haven't figured out, like, aerodynamics yet. Or, like, properly. The, the world hasn't figured out, like, aerodynamics, wings and shit like that. Oh, you could accelerate a circular saw. True. I haven't thought about that. You don't have to push things away. You can spin them as well. Hmm. And it would spin really fast, actually. Like, you could definitely... You could definitely win a, uh, a Beyblade contest if you were an acceleration mage. You know? Can the poofy sleeve be input? No. I do want it to be, like, the stomach thing. Okay, but uh, could you increase the speed of a chemical reaction? Uh, no. I don't think it would be that precise. You you you'd push the. <laughs> You'd push the, 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 like, chemical reaction set off the table. You could definitely do that. Like, there's a beaker with a Bunsen burner underneath it and fucking, you know, tubes attached, and then you just accelerate it off the table. You could definitely do that. Again, they have not figured out aerodynamics, so a magic helicopter is not really in the picture. Well, yeah, having it in the front has both upsides and downsides. If you had it in the back, it'd be really hard to attach things to it by yourself. Uh, and also then you couldn't wear like any sort of backpack as well. Uh, but then obviously crawling on the stomach would be easier. Uh, but I'd say like having it in the front also just makes the design a little more interesting because then we can have that sort of, you know, umbilical cord visual. If we had it in the back... Eh. Yeah, I'm slowing down on drawing. We should be continuing. Um, I don't know if I like these pants more than... more than these ones. Maybe I do. But the folds are a bit... Maybe I want to go with the tie-style folds. If you can, uh, if you look at the tie one, the, the folds sort of emanate from the crotch and, and fold to the side, which might be an interesting way to do it. So let's try drawing that. So they sort of go like this. That. And maybe the pants also has like a really low crotch, which might be, uh, which might fit into the uh, comfortable 
side of things. So there's a lot of space you know, for air to flow. give it the well let's try no knee pads actually let's go right into the no i feel like we do need knee pads if we go right into the socks it sort of feels like there needs to be something to like knee wraps Hey, Insanity! Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the five dick -ick. Don't know if you already pointed this out, but uh, this Eastern concept reminds me the Genis Genissaries, a group of elite guards composed by kidnapped children. Could yours be converted young prisoners from Rom? There'd be no point. I mean, especially for mages. It'd be just an unnecessary risk to try and convert ROM prisoners uh, who are opposed to you to your most important soldier. You'd rather have the most loyal, you know, uh, agreeable soldiers being trained to become mages. It's a it's a Danish kroner. Yeah, what am I missing? Hmm. So okay, we have the inner outfit, which is this, right? Then having like an additional poofy sleeve on top might be the way to go, actually. Where it's like an additional layer that you slip over one arm and then have it like tied to the body. Like this. And then we need the armor on top of that, which would be the overlapping plate, then this, and the sections, and then another pad on top of that, and then that. Which is a lot. It, it makes sense. It 
also gives them an interesting look. Sorry, I'm getting more quiet. I'm just thinking about the concept. Pauldron. Let me search up pauldrons again. Maybe get some good images. Yeah, it's the magic mutation from Acceleration Mages that basically have one longer arm like a fucking pistol shrimp. Okay, maybe something nice like this might be good. Or, hmm. Because I don't just want it to be, like, attached loosely. I want it to have, like, a nice uh, con a contour against the, against the body. Um... Order nachos. So they turn into crabs? No, they just have a longer arm. Not actually turn into crabs. I said like a pistol shrimp, not into a pistol shrimp. Looks great, love the vids. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, so... I think I'm going into detail too quickly. I think that's what's happening. I'm getting lost in the sauce too soon. Should focus more on just having fun with the shapes first. So let's try to pull it back and see about just making an interesting design first. So I do really want to keep this shape for the chest. I think that is really the way to go. Let's try making a cod piece. Or not try making a cod piece. Let's try adding a cod piece. Because honestly, whatever you guys say, you won't be able to change my mind. Cod pieces are cool. They're fucking awesome. If only it was okay to wear one nowadays, I'd fucking do it. Because cod pieces are baller. You know, medieval time. Fucking. Okay, don't know if I want like two strings. I think just the front one's good enough. Baller, literally, yes. Okay, what if we have it be puffy at the bottom? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We gotta have it be... Um... God, that's so tough. It just makes it look so thick! What if we cut it off sooner? Like, instead of having it go all the way down to the knee, what if the puff just stops, like, in the middle or, like, halfway down the thigh? 
instead. It's gonna look even more like stock. Fuck! God damn it! He's so thick! Jesus! It just looks like stockings, and now he has, like, thick thighs spilling over the edge of the stockings. God damn it. Oh, my soldier, no. My Verushan soldier, what have I done? It's fine. No, look at it. I'm gonna do, like, <laughs> the fucking... Fishnets as well. Oh, terrible. Hear me out. It's cloth, all right? Trust me. This is not his legs. This is cloth. His legs are normal. <laughs> this is... I'm making his codpiece smaller. You can't stop me. I just smallified his ween. Verusi, can he be thick? I mean, he... How can you go out to battle like this? You can't go out to battle like this! Terrible. Where's the imposing part going? Oh, it's all gone. Imposing, looming, king. Slaying in every sense. No, listen, let me finish this, and then we'll see. I, I, I want to get to the end of this, just in case we, like, got something. But ugh, the problem is, like, the, the pattern on the pants is a cross pattern, so I do have to sort of draw these lines. Ah, oh, damn it. What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, let me just keep going. Let's keep going. See what happens. Okay, and then let's have the, uh, the big, puffy, protective sleeve on this side. Maybe it has tassels? Yeah, no. It looks like half of a bunny suit with the rest being a military uniform. It's like it's like a weird kinky military uniform fucking Halloween costume. Like you'd get it at a at a Halloween store like, "Oh, sexy military uniform." Uh Halloween costume that's terrible. No, I can't have this. I can't have this. So much intimidation. <laughs> Cannot have this. It's... Is is can I not add a cod piece? I think the issue is adding the cod piece. Well, it's the cod piece combined with the two straps going down the side. So like if I if I elongate this, okay, what if I elongate this? Like that, and then have a cod piece. The cod piece doesn't work. I don't think the cod piece works. Which which makes me terribly sad. 
cod pieces always work. What do you mean my cod piece doesn't work? <laughs> no, not my cod piece. Me, my idea of a cod piece, not my cod piece. My cod piece doesn't work, so that's, that's what she said. Maybe only cod piece? No. <laughs> no. No. Cod piece dysfunction, yeah. This is sad. This is a sad day in the monster garden. I can't add a cod piece because it actually looks wrong with a cod piece. Fuck. That is some sad ass news. Ah. <sighs> That is a shame. See, as soon as the cod piece is gone, it doesn't look wrong anymore. saddens me to my very core. We could have the um the knife be strapped to the no, those are too loose. Or they're too like floppy. Classic boot dagger, perhaps? True. Boot dagger might be the way to go. But then the, oh, the little pretty straps on the side, though. What do we do with those? Or the little tassels? I feel like just having a dagger, like, here, or, like, under the armpit. Here seems like the best bet. Right? I mean, oh, God, the drip is immaculate, though. Why is it gone? Why is he so drippy? What the fuck? As soon as I put in the fucking pouches, he instantly just becomes fucking... Is this the... Oh. This is the owner of Rom. This is Mr. Rom himself. The personification of the country. He's the hero we wanted, and the hero we deserve, and the hero we got. He's all of them. Self-assigned. Does it go over the armor or under the armor? It has to go over the armor, right? No, but the armor... Mm. Mm. No, the armor goes over. Because if I, if I do this, it cuts that silhouette. And I like it being like this, you know. Yeah, but then the issue becomes again, what do we do with the sleeve? Because that arm has to be a lot bigger. Um, Gyat? No, don't Gyat this. There's no Gyat. There's no reason to be saying Gyat. Yeah. God damn! <laughs> just give him. Okay, for the for the meantime, I'm just gonna give him a dumpy just for the for the shits and giggles. <laughs> just holy shit! Just for the stream. This is the kind of content you get for tuning into the stream. You don't get this in the videos. Yacht indeed. <laughs> oh my god! I might have gone too far.
but I don't know. I kind of like it. Sometimes too far is good. YouTube only viewers crying and shaking right now. More. Now, nah, don't more. Don't say fucking more. This is enough, greedy bastard. <laughs> you get a... Dude, what do you mean more? You get a whole bakery. And you are over here like, mm, I want more. You can't fucking handle this. This is already exceeding the amount you can handle. And you're telling me more? Fuck it. You're flying too close to the sun, Icarus. Fucking. Cod piece it. No, we're not cod piecing it. You got the ass. That's enough. That's enough. I, I, it's enough for the fan service this stream. Definitely just cloth. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. To counterbalance? No. No, we're not doing a cod piece. I'm losing viewers. I'm actively using losing viewers because of this. We were at 500. As soon as I did the cod piece and the straps and the fucking... The, the, the panty stockings and now the gut, my viewers are dropping. You know, I'm sacrificing viewers for your fucking, for for the for the rest of you sickos to 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 get your kicks, to get your rocks off. Curly shoes? What do you mean? Shabby, shabby, not you, shabby. God damn it! Don't don't you fucking ask for a cod piece. But yeah, uh, okay, is there a way to, hold on, cut sleeve, <clears throat> like, uh, the thing is, we can have a hole here. You know, we can just put a hole or, like, a slit in the sleeve here to get your arm through. But then it's like, how the fuck do you get your arm through there if you already have it on? Which means if you wanted to get your arm through it, you'd have to take off your... You'd have to take off the pauldron. If you had a if you had the armor level layer on, too, this is not armor. This is just the cloth. So take off the pauldron. Take off the armor. Take off the padded shoulder. Then take off the the straps of your equipment then the knife then your sh then the uniform and then you can put your hand through the fucking sleeve which is too much you know i want it to be like a quick quick thing like you can pull the sleeve off <clears throat> i mean okay if the armor is designed for acceleration mages. Clearly it's already designed for acceleration mages because it has the pauldron, it has the puffy uh, shoulder, which is for acceleration mages. So they would know that one of the arms is going to get longer, which means they would design the outfit to f to help with that. So it, it has to have like buttons down the side just, that just cuts the sleeve pretty much. So you just get a cut sleeve like this. And just have buttons that, that can, like, hook it. Like that, right? <clears throat> but then, like, how do you fold that up neatly? How much mana he packed in that cake? Dude, he is he is all of Verus's mana storage at the moment. He has all of Verus's magic capacity in his cheeks. Oh, hello, Sedeka. 
cod piece now. God damn. You, hold on. Tabby and Sedeka, both of you are finally in the same place just for the sake of pleading for a cod piece. No, that's enough. Okay, okay. You guys, you guys are making too much of a fuss about asking for a cod piece. You are not satisfied with what I gave you. So you know what? I'm taking it away. I'm taking away what I gave you. Not, this is, I, I am displeased with your attitude, you know? You take and take and take and never say thank you. Yeah, that's what you get. No, that's what you get. You guys, are, you know, I give you a dumpy and then you're like, oh, but the cod piece, please, please, cod piece. You know, not even a thank you or anything. So I'm removing it. I'm removing it. Done. Done deal. No, no takesies, backsies. That was it. You had your chance. <laughs> no, it's too late. Don't don't be fucking grateful now, you know? Don't be grateful now when it's too late. You know what Ed Sheeran said. Ed Sheeran said, Well, you only need the light when it's burning low. Or, wait, is that Ugwe? <laughs> you only need the sun when it starts to snow. Yeah, that's exactly. You, you, you're, you, didn't, you weren't thankful for it when you had it. And and Ed Sheeran foretold it. I don't even. I don't think Ed Sheeran sang that song. I think that's a completely different person. Who the fuck sang that song? You you only need the light when it's burning low. That one. Who who sang that? Hold on. I I hope I don't get copyrighted. By the way, I sang that so perfectly. The YouTube censors are already like quivering. They're like whoa. Is Ed Sheeran in the stream? <laughs> we gotta, we gotta mute this guy. Only. The passenger. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the passenger. Okay, how do we... So, okay, we have this, and then we need an extra button, like, here, right? And then a slit here. And then you would be able to basically pull up the whole sleeve and clip it into the button which would sort of give it an extra poof at the end which is kind of nice yeah I, I I can see that making sense and then you still get the you still get the the little um, frills here as well you still get those oh you know what's genius hold on have the slit be here and then the way those the way these get held up is there's a button behind that anyway. So, okay, here, here. So the sleeve works like this. So you got the, you got the sleeve like this, right? Slit here and then button here and then, oh, sorry, button here. So when you fold up the sleeve, you just connect the button. Like this to hold the sleeve up, right? But then there's also a button up high, so you can just you know take it out and then move it up. My God, I should be a clothing designer, Louis Vuitton. Get get me a job, Louis Vuitton. Is Louis wait? Is Louis Vuitton clothing? Isn't isn't that bags? Yeah, bags. Louis Vuitton is bags. Shit. Um. Uh, Nike. Get me a job. God damn. Wait, Nike's... It's Nike shoes? <laughs> Nike makes clothes, right? They make clothes. Hugo Boss, exactly. Hugo Boss, give me a job. God, hire me now. 
So yeah, we could do that on both sleeves, though. Just have that be a thing on... Well, hmm. Because then... Hmm. Nike's shoes. Fuck! <laughs> why, why am I so bad with brands and remembering shit? What brand makes clothes? I can't think of a brand that makes clothes. Hold on, what clothes am I wearing? Adidas. Yes, Adidas has clothes. There you go. By the way, I don't wear Adidas by choice. It's just, I, I, the, the way I get clothes is I go to a second-hand market and just whatever fits, I get that. I don't look at, like, who the fuck made it. So, and I just happen to have Adidas, I guess. I didn't even know I had this. Yeah. Second-hand markets are great. In Thailand, especially. There's just, they, they just pop up and then you can get your clothes and, and you're done. Daddy does. No, Adi Adidas. Adidas. Right? Adidas. Yeah. Though, uh, I, I feel like eventually I will have to um, actually find a style of clothing that fits with me. Because, you know, I don't have that. I just wear fucking whatever. Just any shirt with any shorts. I have. Well, you don't have... I mean, I don't know. That's what everybody wears normally around here that I see. Just random t-shirt and shorts. Because it's fucking hot. Like, you can't really style clothes when it's hot. Like, what are you supposed to wear? All of it's hot. If you wear any more than one layer, it's too fucking hot. The button could be difficult to close with the shorter arm. Maybe a sleeve with a series of rings with straps and hooks. Oh yeah, straps and hooks might be a way to go about it. But I'm just thinking like, this is uncomfortable. Like the buttons here, if the or the hooks here, that's just uncomfortable to have, like, on a sleeve. I mean, hmm. Just have it be... No, it's fine. It's fine, though. Yeah, yeah, if it's just buttons, it's fine. Like that. <clears throat> and then you can button it up there. Make the sleeve looser. Well, yeah, I, I, mm, I just like the sleeves being very fit to the to the form, sort of, because it gives a cool silhouette, you know. God, this guy's so dripped out. I'm so happy with this, even though, like, I mean, it pretty much didn't change from this version, right? I mean, it changed a little bit. I guess it, what I can do is just draw it over and over again. This this, this is something I do sometimes. <clears throat> this is not an art tip, by the way. This is me just telling you what I do. And if you want to do something with that information, that's up to you. But I do not recommend taking it as art tips because I'm not qualified to give art tips. But I'm just telling you what I do. Sometimes when I get a concept that I like, I just draw the same concept over and over again. Or just... Not like perfectly trying to replicate it every time, but just drawing it because if you draw it over and over again, it the details or the parts of the concept sort of like settle into, they, they settle into place, you know? Like these subtle proportional things where like, oh, how long is this till this? How long is uh this till this? Or how big is this part? And as the more you draw it, or the more I draw it, no tips, no tips, I'm not telling you to, this is me. Um, the more I draw it, the more it, like, sort of, like, wiggles and wobbles into place, and then the proportions, like, get more satisfying as I go. And that's what I did with the dwarf, by the way. 
the dwarf jar idea I had in my sketchbook, but at first it didn't like fit quite right. But the more I drew just the dwarf in its sitting position, the more it like sort of shifted and wobbled into a nice shape. And then it suddenly like just fit. So that's what I might do with this. I'll just like draw it over and over again and like play around with the proportions and the, the ratios and stuff like that. And then hopefully it'll just like settle. But I, I already like where it is actually. So like I'm really happy with, with what we did this stream. Most of it was just looking for references, but I mean, if we very quickly came up with like a really good idea, I'd say that's that's thanks to the references just being really good. Like just the bits and pieces put together turned out really nice. I would say we successfully did manage to get like the mix of military with medieval. You know, it's just enough of both, I would say. This one might be pushing it a little because of the pauldron, but if we get the cloak over top of it as well, I think it fits. But yeah. No, it's not a design tip. Don't call it a design tip. I'm just telling you what I do. Question. Would a soldier from from Rom have a... No. I'm not reading that. Uh, You took away the magic cake, but... We will always have the dwarf cake. My god. Yeah, there you go. That is some awesome fucking drip. It's very Verushan. Or, or very Verushan in the sense that it's just... It's cool for the sake of being cool. I mean, there's also function behind it, but definitely a lot of these details you don't need... But they just put it on there because, you know, it's, it looks awesome. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'd say, yeah, the, the pants being puffy all the way down is definitely the way to go. Um, the pants sort of narrowing here isn't really the right feel. I th well, actually, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, no, no. Gotta be puffy all the way down. We still haven't... Hold on. Uh, Maybe we want, like, another puff here. Under the knee. So the knee wraps are... Nah. It definitely ends at the knee wraps. And then, I mean, we can have, like... Puppies, come on. Just a tiny one. Just a tiny one. Like just that's how the how the cloth is cut, you know? Is that allowed? Can we do that? I yeah. The uniform's giving largely Renaissance vibes. True, true. Maybe hmm. Maybe we didn't strike the balance yet, actually. Um, let's see. What can we do about that? Because, like, if, if we cut this part off, like, this is military. The, the, the legs are perfect, I think, with, with the decorative socks and the shoes with the straps uh, and the knee wraps and the pants is good. But, like, this is... It is just the arm wrap, I think. It's it's just the arm piece here that's giving that feel, I think. Because, like... If I, if I remove the arm piece, it doesn't give Renaissance. Because the armor is, like, the, the one with the... With the patterns and stuff on it. Or the, the cloth part works. But this is... Uh, that's a tough one. Sleeves are perfect too. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Let's try this. Uh, let me put the cloak over top of this. And then we'll see. So, because we haven't even thought about the cloak yet. 
And the helmet. We don't have the helmet on this thing either. But yeah, so the cloak, let me go with the this one first. The the Canadian or um whatever one. So the buttons go off to the side like this. And then it gives like a big old shape. Yeah, also the the reason this guy still looks like normal is because I just didn't give him uh I really didn't give him uh mage proportions. I sort of just gave him normal person proportions. But we'll for sure stretch him out when when we draw him as a mage. Okay, something like that. Okay, and then we give him the helmet. So the helmet is... We are doing the mask, maybe. And let's add this so we can hide everything underneath. It's a shame that the coat will hide pretty much most of the design. But that's just how it is. And, I mean, it's just a cooler reveal, I guess, because when it, the cloak goes off, and then you see all the cool details. Okay. Oh, right, we were going to do the thing as well. Uh, these things. I think this is going to definitely pull it more into... war side of things, if we add these. Right. Maybe the face can just open to the side, perhaps? I don't know. Because I... Hmm, if it opens up to the top, it's sort of... What would be less annoying? Because I do like that silhouette of the back being swooped and then the front being sort of flat. I do like that. The cloak is so good. Thank you. But yeah, I think that gives enough military to, to balance out the medieval aspects. Like, with the cloak, definitely. And then as soon as you, like, take off the cloak, the, uh, you know, that starts kicking in again. Wait, did I accidentally, like, erase a bunch of this? What happened? Why is it so faint? Oh, whoops. He feels like a Victorian policeman. True. 
Kind of does give policeman vibes. Hmm. Can they probably use their arms? In... This ballin. Okay. Uh, what do we think about this? Cause I I think I, I like it. I but I feel like I definitely have to. Um maybe wait a day or like a week for it to settle into my head and uh, see if I'll still like it. But it's definitely a good start. I think it's definitely a good start. Also, their face would it it would look more military or World War One esque when we give them a gas mask because they will have a gas mask most of the time, uh, so they take this off, which means opening it to the side or to the top. I'll still have to think about how the helmet works, but I think for today's stream that is a good amount of progress we've made, and I think that is also enough for today's stream as well. It's been three hours, and we we had some productiveness. You know, managed to to design Verushan, uh, mage armor, ex specifically acceleration mage armor. I'll play around with it more a little bit, but I think it's it's at a good point. But yeah, uh, thank you to all of you for for joining into the stream and helping with the concept. Uh, I I very. Much appreciate your participation, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. And obviously, if there's a video, I hope to see you in that. Uh, but I, I think there's going to be a few more streams until the next video is done, because I still need to finish designing this, and then draw a nice scene with like uh, an acceleration mage and the healing bugs, and then write the script and record it. So there's still a bit to do, uh, most things still to do till the next stream, but still, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm probably going to hop into the server after this, after a little bit of a break. So if you want to hang out there, come join me. But yeah, take care, take care.